Okay, this is part two of the video. And I was looking through the set of instructions and I said at one point that you would not change the color of a worksheet tab, but it looks like you will. So that's when we were covering the topics here of renaming, moving, um, inserting, but here you're gonna change the color of a worksheet tab. So let me go ahead and just revisit that. So when we were on this one four, as you notice, February is a blue. So again, just right click and here are all your tab colors. Just make sure you pause and pay attention to the color of the name and if it has a percentage associated with it. And if you don't use your right click command, just know that under the format tab, here is your tab colors for where underneath the category of organizing sheets. All right, so now we're gonna focus mostly on um, pie charts. So we're gonna work with our pie charts and the things we're gonna do there and then inserting a column chart. Um, then just how to apply these quick styles. And then the rest of these settings, it looks like setting it up for the printer. And then um, we already touched on the average max and min but we're gonna talk about also, you know, entering a simple formula. There's a difference between a formula and a function. We'll cover that. So let's go ahead and start with a pie chart. So I'm gonna move back and I'm gonna go to one of your homework assignments and you can see there is a pie chart here and this one is a column chart. So let's just go ahead and start with a column chart. Now, whenever you're inserting a chart, the first thing you need to do is highlight a range. You need to really specifically pay attention, and sometimes it'll tell you to include the, ta the total, and sometimes you cannot. For this instance, you can see we have, down below, we have April, May, June, July, August, and September. So we're not gonna select the total. So we use a click and drag approach, then we go to the Insert tab, and then I, I myself prefer to go to recommended charts. That way you can click on the tab, all charts, and then go to the category that they want you to go to. Once you click on column, if that's what you're doing, then you go over here to the different styles. And when you click on them, the name of the style will appear below. So you select the appropriate one. And for this particular exercise, we inserted a cluster column chart. And when you select OK, it becomes a floating object. So I'm just gonna scroll over here so we can focus on this. Now, just know if you change your mouse pointer and if you hover over on a white space or in between the bubbles, that'll give you the ability to click and drag to move it. And then these bubbles, you know, the, the corners will change the width and height at the same time or you can go ahead to the center ones to change the width or these center ones to change the height. So just pay attention when you're clicking and dragging as to what corner it should sit in at the top and what corner for the bottom. So you might have to do some resizing. So a floating object would be within your worksheet on the same page, but if they ever ask you to move it to another worksheet, you cannot go ahead and copy it and add a worksheet like this, and then Control and V and paste it. That would not be correct. What they want you to do, um, let me click on undo. What they're asking for, now if I click off of this, you can see those tools go away to the very far right, the ribbons, but if I click back onto my chart, you can see now I have two additional ribbons to help me alter the appearance. When you click on this first one, chart design, the very last button is your move chart. That's what you need to use. You're gonna move it to a new sheet and then it'll let you know how, you know, how to name it. Name it, just like that. And then when you select okay, you'll see that this sheet, and hopefully you can see it with this little border. Let me drag this down a little bit. You'll see how to name it. So we don't want you to copy and paste it. We want you to use this move commands button and then you'll see it will occupy an entire sheet itself. So going back to your set of instructions, now that was insert a clustered or insert a column chart. Now to insert the pie chart, let me take a look at that one. So I'm gonna go back to your data. Now this is a little more challenging because you might have to not be able to, to click and drag, but skip. You either gotta hold down, highlight 
the first group and then hold down your control key on the keyboard and then you highlight the second group and you can see it'll skip cells and when you go to insert and recommended charts if you immediately see something come out with data you know you selected it correctly otherwise you would have a blank screen so you can either do it that way or if needed you can go up here to the name box and you can type out the a4 colon to a9 and then a comma and then h4 colon to h9 make sure the rows are consistent and when you press enter you can see it'll select it for you just in case you're having a hard time and i'm going to click on all charts click down on pi and if it just asks for a, t a 2d pi it's the first selection if you go over to the next one that's a 3d i'm not sure what they're asking for and you select okay and here's your pie chart you're either going to make sure it's on the same sheet or you're going to use this move chart button based on your set of instructions so let's go back now it's saying to um, change the title or hide the legend or show the data labels this is all related to your pie chart these three things so let's go back to your pie chart and talk about that so I'm going to go over here because this one was moved to a new sheet now to change the title all you have to do is just click on it and type over top of it if you do not see it if it disappears this is your charts element button if you make sure this box is checked if you unchecked it uncheck it it will go away if you check it again it'll reappear and then you can go ahead and type it out now you might have to highlight this stuff inside and probably go to your home tab and maybe increase the size of it maybe change it um, I'm not sure but the set of instructions will let you know so the other components of this so you have your title at the top um, and if you notice if you hover over I mean you can position it differently but the legend now the legend I'll just show you what it looks like you could have this at the right so this legend just indicates what color what piece of the pie the color what it associates to so if you go if you click on it to unselect it then it just it disappears from the chart altogether so if you look at this it says hide the chart legend so basically to hide it you just go into this chart element button and you make sure that you deselect it there's no check mark so it goes away now the last thing about a pie chart is these data labels now the data labels are labeling the piece of or the slice so to click on it if you click on it you'll notice that there's all these little bubbles on all these little pieces and you've learned that if you double click on one piece then it will select one piece of pie at a time so let's see what they want us to actually do so we're gonna title legend and then we got to show the labels so when you insert those to make sure that they are shown you're going to make sure that you go to this charts element button make sure the box is selected and there may be other options it may ask you to center those and if there's anything else you need to do with the data labels you're going to have to open up this right pane by clicking on more options and when you do that it might ask you to turn off a category name turn on a percentages or something but it may tell you to turn on certain label options and you can see down below you can center those labels using this pane also so again how do I access the title the legend and the data labels all right here from this chart element button you'll see that all three of them are here and if you hover over to the right it will open up more options and then more options opens up the actual pane for the different changes that you're going to apply all right now going back to let's see with the column chart now this right here the switch row switch row and a column chart they may ask you in a set of instructions and what they're asking for if you notice down here below and let me shut this and let me just blow this up a little bit if you can see that we have all these blocks described by april may and june but if you click up here and again you must be on these chart tool ribbons i'm on chart design if you click on switch row column you can see now the information is displayed differently now the blocks are described by the categories and the colors the legend is representing the color of uh, the bars itself so blue would be april 
So you, they may ask you to switch this information around using the switch row column button. All right, um, so a quick style, that means these chart styles right here. They're all numbered accordingly. There's all these different styles. And that applies to any kind of chart. Same thing with the pie chart. There's all these different styles and are just numbered. So they'll give you a particular chart style number and you'll just apply it. That's what it means by a quick style. All right, so how to preview a worksheet when, um, so it's just saying when we, there's two ways of setting up for orientation and to scale it. So you're, I'm not sure how it's gonna ask you to do this, um, but there's two ways. So let me go to your worksheet. So it may ask for you to go to file, print, and then you can set up these options this way where you have your uh, landscape view. I'm not sure, but another way that you can do it is the page layout tab. This is another way of doing it. And you'll see that you can change the orientation here. It's gonna ask you to scale to fit this way. But again, you might, you can probably do that here. It might ask you to get it to, you know, fit on one page, um, some type of scaling here and then some kind of orientation. I'll probably have you change it to landscape. All right, how many minutes? We only have a couple more minutes left. Let's see. We've already talked about column width. Uh, we'll just talk about cell, cell borders and then these um, right here coming up with a formula. So to type out a formula, let me go ahead back here. So we learned that we can use, and then let me just go ahead and delete these out. So let me click on delete. So we learned how we can use the sum function, but there's another way of doing it by using a formula. You can start with the equal sign, and then if we wanna add week one, um, let me just take this down a little bit. I can go over and I can click on it, use a point click, and you can see how it self-populates. But then I have to go to the keyboard for the operator plus, I'll click on that and I'll go back to the keyboard for the plus, click on that, go back to my keyboard for my plus sign, and then I'll click on this. So that would be a simple formula and I press enter. So I, all I did was use my uh, point click method and I used my keyboard and I just added all those up. Now you might have to add, um, remember that if you're multiplying, it's gonna look like this symbol. If you're dividing, it's gonna look like that symbol, or if you're gonna subtract, it's gonna look like that symbol. It'll let you know what to do based on your formula. So there's gonna be one that you're gonna multiply, and then you're gonna to have to subtract. Always remember the formula must begin with the equal sign before you start putting it together. Now what's the difference between absolute, um, absolute cell referencing? Just remember that whenever you have a, a cell, this would be relative, and this one, if you put the dollar symbols in front of the C and in front of the four, this one is considered absolute cell referencing. So it'll let you know what to do in your set of instructions, but if you have to apply absolute cell referencing, remember it's because they're asking for these dollar symbols in front of the letter and also the number. Okay, and let's see, cell borders, the last thing that I need to talk about. So the difference between this gray line, this is a grid line. It just lets you know what cell you're in. But if you see these black lines, they are printable lines. So that's a border. So if I go to print, you can see how these are gonna be printable lines. So to apply borders, make sure you're on your home tab. Just make sure you have the region select that they want you. And then you go into the home tab. Here's your drop down list of all the different borders that are available to you. So best of luck, um, make sure you're taking notes and you can use those during your midterm.